Good day, I'm Jeff Jowett, Senior Applications Engineer with Megger. We're here today to show you our core product line, the insulation testers, and in particular, we're going to take a look at the medium voltage insulation testers. Megger invented the insulation tester over a century ago, and it's a core product for the maintenance and the protection of electric motors as well as all other types of electrical equipment. So it can be used anywhere in your electrical system, but today we're going to take a particular look at electric motors. And the insulation tester is used for testing and maintaining the insulation, which in turn breaks down over the life of a motor and eventually causes it to become inoperative. But by proper maintenance, you can extend the life of the motor as well as extend its operating efficiency and prevent things like uh, breakdown in operation. During its life, insulation is subject to a number of attacks. These include electrical attacks from uh, startup surges and voltage spikes, mechanical attacks from things like vibration and the dragging of cables, chemical attack from corrosives in the environment, thermal attacks, of course, because a lot of operating environments are very hot, and finally, environmental attacks, and this comes primarily in the form of moisture. Motor testing is important for at least four core reasons. The one that immediately comes to mind, of course, is protection of personnel. Maintaining the insulation of motors protects personnel by preventing voltage gradients from developing from the motor case to ground due to breakdown in the insulation and shorting out where a human inadvertently could become the path to ground and be electrically shocked. Secondly, you reduce the probability or the likelihood of spontaneously induced fires. And this would occur from the insulation breaking down, causing heat to develop inside the case between the electrical circuitry and the case of the motor. This heat can build up over time. It may not be enough to trip your protective devices, but it can certainly be enough to ignite dirt and corrosives that collect inside the motor and you have a spontaneous combustion and a spontaneously induced electrical fire. Thirdly, you can extend the useful life of the motor by doing preventive maintenance and in turn this will keep the insulation uh, running smoothly, keep the motor running smoothly, the inf insulation performing its job, and accordingly the motor can last a lot longer than if it's simply not tested and neglected. And finally, you can avoid unscheduled downtime the breakdown of the motor in service, which can be very costly, you can head that off by looking at what the condition of the insulation is, and if it's approaching a breakdown level, then you can perform maintenance on it, extend its life, and prevent the breakdown in service. Okay, now we'll take a look at the panel of the instrument. In this case, this is our 10 kV model, MIT 1025. We also have 5 kV and 15 kV in this particular family. And note that the panel is specifically designed for ease of use. We have selector switch, not membrane switches. Makes it much easier for the operator to manipulate even with gloves on. And you can always take a look at the panel if you get distracted on some other issue and come back to the job. You, all you have to do is look at the panel and you can see where you were. On this switch we have the various automated test procedures that are already set up and ready to go. You're Fundamental test is just hooking up and taking a measurement. That's your insulation resistance IR test. You can also do a time test so that you can set up the amount of time that you want to run the test, walk away, perform some other 
task if you wish. The tester will run the test for that selected time, save all the data, come back and take a look at the data. Then we have dielectric absorption ratio. This is for newer insulation. It's like the familiar polarization index, but with a shorter time signature, which you can adjust on the setup features. And it will run the test on newer insulation that doesn't have as long a time response as a lot of the older materials did. And then, of course, we have your familiar polarization index, and it will run automatically for 10 minutes, save all the relevant data, calculate the polarization index, and so forth. Dielectric discharge test, I guess is a long one, half hour test. Again, it will run this all automatically for the prescribed amount of time and calculate your DD and display that at the end of the test procedure. And we have step voltage. Again, you, this is selectable. The operator can set the voltage limit, and then the tester will automatically divide this into five equal portions of one minute per test, and it will run this all automatically. At the end of each minute, it will jump to the next voltage level, and again, all this data will be saved and available to the operator at the end of the test. And finally, the ramp test, which is very sophisticated. It's it's like a step voltage, except it does this one volt at a time, and it graphs the insulation resistances that you see at each voltage point from one volt on up. And all this data is saved and can be graphed out. This is where you manipulate the actual particulars of a given test, like how long it's going to run, uh, various other features that you can manipulate on the setup. and with this, you use your arrows to maneuver around the display to find the value that you want to incorporate it into the test, depending on what the test is. And then when you get to that, you hit OK, and that in turn selects that particular value and incorporates that into the test procedure. So this is a refinement for setting up your tests against the variables that are incorporated into the particular established test procedures. And then, of course, when you're all ready to go, you hit your test button. And note that you have selectable test voltages, in this case up to 10 kV, but we also have a special selectable function where you can set this at almost any voltage across the range, 10 volt increments on the lower end, 25 volt increments on the higher end. And when you go through this procedure, and again, these would be your arrow functions, for instance, where you would select the voltage that you want. So if you want to test 600 volt cable, for instance, at specifically 600 volts, you could set that up and then your last blank selector switch position becomes that particular voltage. In this case, someone has set it up for a 900 volt test. And once you do that, you would hit your test button and the tester would energize and it would go up and in this case performing a 900 volt test. And so you can do that across the entire range of voltage in with this particular model up to 10 kV and of course we have 5 kV as I said we have 5 kV and 15 kV models available. The tester operates on battery and line power one or the other whichever the operator prefers at a given situation. It's safety rated to CAT4 1000 volts and finally, let's not forget the test leads. These are frequently overlooked in a test procedure and faulty test leads can negatively affect your test results and very often it's not even noticed. We try to help with that by having double-coated leads and the reason being that the inner layer is a different color. So if the outer layer is wearing too much, you'll see a different color warning you that the leads are beginning to wear and need to be replaced with before you have a breakdown or a problem that negatively affects your test results. PowerDB software comes provided 
And this gives you the capabilities of storing and manipulating and graphing all your data, etc., whatever you need to do to make the maximum use of the collected data. For those of you who are interested in standards conformance, of course, there's a lot of them out there. It is a good idea, especially if you're dealing with third parties, to have a standards conformance that reduces the amount of discussion that needs to go on and uh, fixes your test results against an independent uh, authority to interpret and standardize your test results. Uh, the main one for motors would be IEEE 43. There are quite a few others that also apply to various types of electrical testing, uh, but we'll mention IEEE 43 up front as a very good one to test against and store your results against that standard. Now we wouldn't be testing a smaller motor as we have here on the table. We just have this set up as a demo. First of all, note that you can't accidentally energize the tester. This is a safety feature so that if one guy is hooking up to a large motor, let's say, and he's working with a partner, the partner can accidentally brush a, 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 a test button and shock his coworker. So instead, we've got a safety delay that you hold the test button down until the tester energizes. And note that it will show you your actual applied voltage in, a, in addition to your reading in, in this case, terohms, because we just have it hooked to a very small motor where there's really not very much insulation to load down. Uh, you have your logarithmic arc and your pointer that travels like an analog pointer. And we have the time of the test. Note down here, we show you the actual leakage current, the reciprocal of the resistance reading. And of course, we just saw a good test, but here's something you don't ever want to see, but you will. This is a breakdown. So this showed you that the motor shorted out to ground in the process of the test, and it's telling the operator it could not apply any voltage because there's a short circuit there, and the test item has broken down. We've been specifically looking at Megger's medium voltage testers, but Megger also produces a complete line of handheld 1 kV testers, plus we have here the MIT 2500, which ranges all the way up into the medium voltage range at 2500 volts in an easy to operate, convenient handheld unit. Okay, so why don't we make one of these in 5 kV? Because operator safety is paramount in all mega products, and you could not have that much voltage in a handheld unit and still conform to the IEC 61010 safety standard for operator protection. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, Megar has a team of applications engineers waiting for your call or your email.